Winter is fast approaching and with that in mind I need to start winterizing some of my bee colonies in order to be able to make sure they get through the winter. Now I've already started this process by treating for Varroa mites and today I've got the very last treatment for them but as you can see behind me we are in the 18th century manor house and uh, we are going to uh, treat our colonies and uh, for the last time and then we are going to wrap them and I'm going to talk about some of the things that you need to think about for overwintering your bees and that's coming right up after this. I'm Tony O'Neill, this is UK Year We Grow. On this channel we deal with all things gardening, beekeeping and poultry keeping. If it's your first time here, consider hitting the subscribe button and bell icon to be notified each time we put out new content just like this. Okay guys, so there are lots of different ways in which to treat your bees and what I'm using is this. It is an insect fogger which I purchased from America. Now, out in America, the they use this system quite a lot. Now there are various ways to treat your bees and that uh, is usually with a chemical um, called thymol and I try and stay away from that. It has a few disadvantages. It's very good product, it, it'll kill it. Um, you'll have like things like Max Quick Strips and um, Appy Guard, which are like a tray of liquid you put in the top of the hive. The only problem with all of these systems is the fact that you need to be able to have all the honey off the hive at the time because it can affect the honey. And for me, putting these chemicals, really bad chemicals into a hive is not a good thing. And it also means that I can't treat the hives through the year. Now, uh, a lot of keepers have switched over to what's known as oxalic acid and they'll do an oxalic acid drizzle where they will mix up oxalic acid in a sugar solution, uh, a syrup, and they will drizzle that across each seam of bees. And that works quite well as well. But at this time of year, we don't want to be doing that for a couple of reasons. And obviously the first of those reasons is those bees then become wet and you're introducing huge amounts of moisture into the hive now i'm doing this early enough we are at the end of october and it's going to allow me in you know time for this these hives to dry out what i'm using is an insect fogger i've made up my solution of oxalic acid and this is oxalic acid crystals and it's mixed in an alcohol and uh, we then actually use this fogger and basically all it does is atomizes the oxalic acid puts it through the hive three good pumps into the hive and then that hive's treated now you need to do this um, each week for three weeks and the reason for that is the varroa mite this will kill all the varroa that um, that are on the backs of bees and things like that but it doesn't kill the varroa that's in the actual cells now i'll do another video later on in the year about varroa but essentially what happens is a varroa will go into a cell and it will um, basically breed within that cell and, and lay eggs and um, then all those varroas come out of the cell. Well of course while we are doing this in week one there'll be some in cells that won't be affected they'll come out and they'll continue to breed so what we'll do is um, we will continue this for a three week period this is the last week of the three weeks now so these hives will be totally treated and that should really knock the varroa population on its backside before the end of winter uh, before the end of summer and then as winter kicks in now um, these bees will be really strong going into winter so i'm just going to turn this on and essentially all this is There we are. That's lit now, so I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, that's gonna get, this coil is gonna get red hot in a bit, and then we can atomize this oxalic acid. In the meantime, I'm gonna get myself set up so that we can get onto the hives. I'm gonna stand this somewhere nice and safe, and we'll be on it now. All right, guys, as you can see now, this is red hot, look. And this is what happens. So now all we're gonna do is just put this inside 
and that this doesn't give a hot steam it's cold it's a cool steam but um, we just need to put it inside and that's it treated for Varroa I'm just gonna do the other one I want to talk a little bit about the hive first and I'm going to move around and stuff and do things as I'm talking about it but but basically we have a couple of things going on here to help through the winter and the first thing is this bottom board here it's a screen bottom board that means it's open there's a mesh flow in it you've seen it in other videos that's going to allow airflow coming through the um, through the hive and that's really important because bees don't mind being cold what they can't abide by is being wet and through the winter what happens is that um, these bees will generate heat that heat will rise up through the colony and it'll condense on the top board when it condenses on the top board it drips back down into the hive and that's when you lose colonies in the winter now typically beekeepers will lose a percentage of colonies anyway 20 30 percent is just the way it is um, through starvation uh, and, and all sorts of reasons but anything we can do to help them has got to be a good thing now they're quite protected here in the fact that they got this stone wall but we're going to help them by wrapping it so we've got airflow coming up through the collie now another thing we have in the front here is an upper entrance and that upper entrance is really important in stopping that condensation because what that does it allows that hot air that's that the bees are generating to try and keep warm it allows that air to escape and therefore it can't condense on the cover now if I open up the lid here so in here if you remember before we have a tray um, they've actually propolized it down and we've got a feeder uh, donut inside there what I'm going to do to insulate the top is add some of this polystyrene I've pre-cut it to fit so all I've got to do is literally move the feeder and put the polystyrene in and that just sits down like that this feeder can now be taken away and this insulation is now going to um, protect the hive from the cold weather hitting the top of it that's really important I'm gonna have I may have to crack this because it's smoothed um, and I want to straighten it up or the plastic won't fit right and what we're gonna have is probably a load of bees come out at the time hopefully they won't be too mad at me but it is what it is so there we go so I've broken that seal but you can see even better now the upper entrance here okay and that's important as well because not only does it allow the hot air to escape on a warm day it will allow the bees to come out especially if it's snowed and it's blocked up the, bro the bottom entrance um, and this year we had snow that did block up the bottom entrances well those bees wouldn't have been able to get out at any time to have um, to, to, to you know to have a flight in order to sort of clear themselves up so what we're going to do now the next thing we need to do is wrap the hive and what I have here is this is plastic boarding it's um, used to go underneath play board when you're using this flooring to stop it squeaking and things like that um, it's sold this particular one is sold at Wix and it's weatherproof it's made of uh, proper X and it's recyclable so but we're gonna get a few years out of this so basically all I have to do for this is literally wrap the hive and yes I'm gonna cover up the entrance for the moment and we literally just wrap this around here like this keeping it tight and all I need to do now is put some staples in the back guys
okay these tops I've actually cut so they will now fold down hopefully nice and tight this one is cutting a bit more and again this will do us a few things it will help keep the drafts out of the hive and it will not only keep the draft out of the hive but it will allow the hive to be waterproof through the winter so we now just put this lid back on it's going to be tight here we are which is how we want it And the only thing left to do now is to cut out our entrance which is down here somewhere just like that we'll put a staple around that as well And now we just need to find our top entrance, which is around here somewhere. I think it's there. I might be wrong though. There it is. Excuse me in your way a minute guys. And this is the really important entrance guys so you need to make sure that you get this one right even if you cut too much plastic away it's important it's not a problem here we are couple more staples in there and we'll put a staple now just to keep this to the sides And there we have it guys so there's one hive here now overwintered they've got enough feed and um, we're keeping them in a double brood uh, box for winter they've got about a hundred pounds worth of honey in here and they're still bringing it in because we are having some pretty good weather at the moment but i'm going to get on with the one behind now and uh, and then this area this apiary is done and uh, i just need to get on with the rest of them but this is how I protect my hives for the winter. We will strap this hive as well uh, through the winter to make sure this roof doesn't come off, but it is on there quite tight now um, with this plastic in here. Um, we've got the upper end entrance that will allow that hot air to expel and these bees should do really well now over winter. I will come back periodically, probably every five or six weeks uh, over the next sort of couple of months to check their feed and um, if they are looking uh, that they are losing feed I will then put a, a fondant block on top underneath the polystyrene for them anyway guys this is how I am wrapping my hives for winter I hope you've enjoyed this episode and if you're interested in bees don't be afraid get in touch I'm more than happy to talk to you guys about it as well uh, they're fantastic insects and uh, they produce some lovely honey for us all that being said guys that's it for me in this episode i'm tony o'neill 
This is UK Year We Grow, and remember folks, you reap what you sow. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.